physical computing with Raspberry Pi. We've spent time working on Python code on the Pi, and now it's time to bring in physical objects. We are going to start with using LEDs, light emitting diodes, are a simple way to bring physical computing to life. We will work to turn the light on and make it blink. Once you understand how to do this, the entire world of physical computing will be open to you. Materials, Raspberry Pi Model 3 B+, micro USB power, HDMI cord, HDMI monitor, 8 gig micro SD card, mouse, keyboard, key concepts, GPIO, time, and sleep. Getting to know Raspberry Pi. One of the best things about Raspberry Pi and Python is using the GPIO pins to create just about anything you want. GPIO stands for General Purpose Input Output. They are the 40 male pins on the side of the Raspberry Pi. Each pin has a specific purpose that can be used for ground, power, connecting to physical computing objects, and more. Here's a look at the pins. These pins serve many purposes, and you want to make sure that you take good care of them. They can bend and break if you are not careful. Bent pins could make it difficult to add other components to the Pi later. Solderless breadboard. A breadboard allows makers to easily connect multiple components of a project without the need to solder. There are hidden metal tracks beneath the breadboard that connect all the components together. You do not have to have a breadboard to build physical computing projects, but it really helps when you are prototyping ideas. Jumper wires. There are three types of jumper wires. Male-male, female-female, and male-female. You will use the different wires for different parts of a project. You will need a female end to connect to Pi and a male end to use the breadboard. You will need male-male to go from one spot on the breadboard to another. Have a collection of each type of jumper in different lengths is always helpful when working on physical computing projects. Button switch. The button switch is a simple physical computing component that is an input device. You would tell the code to be on the lookout for the button press and then do something when it's pressed. Light emitting diode, LED. The LED is an output device. It is controlled by the program you have created. You could code a program to turn the light on when the button is pushed. LEDs come in all shapes, sizes, and colors, but not all are good to use with Raspberry Pi. The LEDs that we need to use have a design for 5 or 12 volts. You will also notice that one leg is longer than the other. The long leg is the positive leg, and the short leg is the negative leg. You will need to know that when you're starting putting your circuits together. Resistors. Resistors help control the flow of electrical current. They come in different values that are measured in ohms. The higher the number, the more resistance it will offer. You will most often use resistors around 330 for LEDs. If you do not use resistors with LEDs on your Pi, you risk damaging or burning out your LED completely. Here's how you can read resistors and their values. Buzzer. The full name of a buzzer is the piezoelectric buzzer, and it is another output device. There are two different types of buzzers, active and passive. Make sure you get the active buzzer because they are much easier to work with on projects. Sensors. There are a variety of sensors that can be used with Raspberry Pi for physical computing projects. They are input devices. The Pi will take in information from the sensor and do something based on the program you've written. Motion sensor. This sensor uses infrared to detect motion. Perfect if you're planning on creating a trap or an alarm for your room. Temperature sensor. Measures the temperature of the area around the sensor. This would be good in gardening projects or projects that require a specific temperature. Humidity sensor. Measures the general humidity of a room or soil. Perfect for predicting weather or checking to see if plants need to be watered. Light sensor. This sensor checks to see if there's sufficient light or darkness, depending on your program, and will trigger something based on the code you have written. This could be used to create a night light that turns on when the room goes dark. Project. Let's get physical using an LED. Materials. LED. Three female-female jumper wires. One 330 resistor. One Raspberry Pi. The first thing you're going to do is make sure that your Raspberry Pi is turned on. Next, you're going to attach one end of a female female jumper to your resistor and the other end to the long leg, positive, of the LED. Take another female female jumper wire and connect it to the other side of the resistor and then plug that jumper into the 3 volt GPIO pin on the Raspberry Pi. Take the last female jumper wire and attach it to the ground GPIO pin on the GPIO and the other end to the short leg, negative, of the LED. 
you should have a circuit that looks like this. Once you wired everything together, the light should turn on. If it does not, make sure that all the wires are connected correctly. The mistake that most often occurs is that the LED legs are connected to the wrong wires. If it still does not light up, try a different LED. The reason that the LED lights up without any code is because the three volt pin is always on. That means it is always sending power out. By connecting the LED to the three volt GPIO pin and the ground, you're completing the circuit. We are now ready to add code to make the light turn on. Take the female jumper wire connected to the three volt GPIO pin and move it down to the GPIO 25 pin. This is the 11th pin from the top on the outer row of the GPIO pins. Open a new Thony tab and save it as first light. Enter the following code. We are importing the LED function from the GPIO library. The GPIO library is a library that allows users to access the GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi LED as LED25. The 25 is LED25 in the GPIO pin we are going to use to control the LED. To control the LED on and off, type one of the following two lines of code. You can use the hashtag or number sign to comment out one of the two lines depending on whether you want to turn the LED on or off. Try out both. Congrats, you've controlled an LED with Python code. Now that you've turned the light on and off, it is much easier to have the program do that for you. Add the following code to make your LED blink. We are adding the sleep function from the time library and we are adding a sleep line three times. Note that the number in the parentheses is the amount of time the code will pause there. Run this code and see what happens. The light should turn on, off, and then on again. You did it. You made the light blink. Challenge. Do you think that you can make the light blink forever using a forever loop? What would that look like? Can you add another LED and code it to blink as well?